Hello, welcome back to the vlog. Well, it's 2017 and not a lot going on. Just waiting for some nice weather now. Everything's growing along slowly. We haven't had a lot of heat. This is a cold greenhouse. So I'm fully aware that things will take longer to grow in here. In addition, are these terracotta pots, which I found these online. Vivi sent me the link because she bought some as well. And I thought they were quite uh, reasonable anyway. So for all these pots, I think it was 15 pound plus postage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these ones for seeds. And I bought the trays as well. There you go. That's for seeds. And then, oops, watch the glass. Then over here are the bigger pots where things like big plants, geraniums will go. So this is their final growing position. And these ones, these are the ones that I like the best. These are called long toms. And that to me is a proper Victorian terracotta pot. So the only thing that I've actually done today is emptied some of the compost bags into this raised bed. It's not full, but I'll do the rest on the next fine day. Pond is absolutely frozen over. It's a few inches thick is my guess. So I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to leave it there. I think the sun has exposed maybe a hole there. So there's oxygen getting in. But whatever, whatever you do, do not crack a pond. That's the worst thing you can do. So frosty. Look at that. I can't even get this. This tray of violas out of the uh, ground. Look at it. It's solid. Anyway, they can just stay there. Enjoy the sunshine. When I came down this morning, it was very frosty. This week, it's been getting down to round about minus 65 and that's inside the greenhouse. So whatever excitement I had at the start of the month, it has certainly been put on ice for the time being. One thing I want to do over the coming few weeks is to tidy up this area and build some proper shelves. So there's enough space so I can put on my bits and bobs, because at the moment it's just all thrown together. But I want some nice shelves and everything for a place and all that and make a really good job of it. I might even extend the table out a bit at the top. Although it's, it's quite a nice depth this. It's not too big, not too small. So we'll see. That's one of my little jobs for February. Because February on my plot is one of the coldest months down here. I've noticed in recent years that January is more like spring and February and March are quite cold. In fact, we've had snow down here in April for the last seven or eight years. My birthday is April the 23rd, and we've always had snow about a week or two before. So there's plenty of uh, winter tasks to be doing, but spring won't be that far ahead. A quick update from the seeds in the greenhouse. Some of my lettuce have come up. And next door to that, I've got a nice crop of Calabrese starting. Now you may have noticed over the last few days that we've been doing a few live videos. YouTube has given me this new feature and it means I can do a video live on the YouTube channel as long as I've got my phone with me. Now. Even though you may be subscribed to the channel, to be told whether a live broadcast is on, this is what you have to do. So I'm just going to use Julie's channel so that you can see what I'm doing. So you subscribe to the channel, and then that little button there, if you see that, that little bell, 
you click on that bell and then it tells you at the bottom then that you will be notified when a video goes live. So if you haven't done that, do that. So just make sure that the bell has t that is black and it has two little bits on the side. So you get an email telling you that a live video has started and you can recognize the live videos by the the red button in the title there. So if you see an email with a red button, that means the video is live. I'm just going to go over to my shed and see if I'm fair in well in this weather. I wouldn't expect the race beds to have blown away anyway. Oh! I'm missing something. Do you remember down there I had a hoop thing? A hoop cloche? That's gone. And what's this here? Somebody's felt it's from something. Well, that can go. Oh, a few things have bl blown over, but that's all right. Oh, my bags. Everything's secure. I was. Ooh. Oh, that's the roof. Then I thought something was flying over. Ah, the daffodils are out. Daffodils are out. I wonder where that hoop house went. I can't see it anywhere. Maybe it's flown off to Kansas. Look what I found. Right. Well, I'm not going to try and move it. I'll just leave it there for now. Look at that, it's so strong. It's actually snapped it off. I might just go and get the, screw, the uh, screwdriver and just dismantle the whole thing because there's no point in me trying to move it in this weather. She's about to blow! I've come into the relative warmth of the greenhouse. My tulips are popping up and now next door with this bit of heat all my seeds are now starting to come through. There's onions there uh, lettuce, canabrice, cauliflower, and some onions from seed. The hyacinths are in full bloom and giving off a fantastic scent. These are where I'm keeping my bulbs this year in pots. Daffodils, I think they'll be up in about a week's time. The rhubarb is putting on a tremendous amount of weight and just next door to that are some of my other variety of daffodils. Beautiful. So I'm sorting two rows of potatoes today. I'm just going to put some potato feed in the bottom because they're a very uh, demanding crop, potatoes. I'm just going to work that into the soil. Here are my potatoes with nice sturdy chits on. If you've got some chits that I have quite a few on, I just rub them off so that I leave just two. You get bigger potatoes that way. So just like that. Rub them off until you've got two sturdy ones. up on this big bed here. This is where I've put my main crop potatoes. The variety is Rudolph. It's a new one on me. And in this bed I've already got my broad beans in. There's a few misses so I'll put some uh, put some more seeds in. And then in this section here I've planted my shallots. And the variety 
is there you are La Gaulle. so I have to keep an eye on these because sometimes the birds will come and just lift them up thinking they're worms and if you'll see these blue little things here this is actually uh, onion feed so I've put some of that on there and in this bed here where all the twigs are I've put a row of peas I've put the twigs in just to uh, stop the cats and the foxes from digging them up and as soon as I can see them I will remove all the twigs and put proper uh, structures in for them to uh, climb up you remember at the start of the year I sold some salvias and I took these home put them on the windowsill and look at them turned into some beautiful plants but it's time to put them into individual pots so I'm going to transplant them into these uh, seven centimeter pots repot it firm it in and I'll keep these in the greenhouse and they can go outside in about a, a month to six weeks time depending on what the weather is I'll give them a really good soaking as well well it's a beautiful Saturday morning here on the allotment and Rusty's just waiting for the baby's cafe to open <laughs> Greenhouse is looking very productive and look my tulips have come out and they are all supposed to be the same variety but this one in the front here is obviously taller um, so I'm not sure but the variety is daydream and you certainly can when you look into the look at that color stunning and they're giving off a beautiful scent as well they do look good in terracotta, I must say. Look at them. Beautiful. And what was it, a week or fortnight ago? But some of my herbs are starting to come up. Especially the borage over there. Nice sturdy uh, plants. I've done quite a bit today, but nothing of any interest to show you. All I've done is I've just filled some of the beds up with some more bags of compost and it's taken all day. So I've now got about 30 bags left. So each bed will get about three and a half, I've worked out, bags. And then it's finished. It's been such a beautiful day today. I've been inclined to start thinking about putting up my runner bean canes but I'll try and hold off for a few more weeks because in the recent years we've had a very nice March but we've had snow in April so I'm trying not to be fooled by this bit of spring weather that we're having but it's really beautiful Just an hour or two in the garden, 
a helping hand and a fair wind and we've got the job done. It's a glorious day today and apparently this could be the hottest day of the year so far. So I'm in the shed doing a bit of uh, cleaning and I'm also going in the greenhouse to do a bit of sewing. But I'm also spending some time and I'm catching up on a few videos. And this area is a, a mixture of worm casts and uh, leaf mould. Some tasks today. I will be transplanting these tomatoes. And I just wanted to show you how well my lavatera is doing. Nothing from my shark fin melons and nothing from the marigolds, which are the pot marigolds, also known as calendulas. The end of March and it's like the middle of summer. Phew. These are the potatoes that I sowed at the start of March and look at them, making wonderful growth. But now it's time to earth them up. And all that means is to put the soil all the way up to the top. I should have really earthed them up a bit sooner than this, but it's been so warm recently that they've really enjoyed this beautiful sunshine. So I'm using multi-purpose compost. And just gently push the stem to one side and then just fill it up all the way to the brim. And then give it a really good watering. I'm now going to transplant my cauliflowers and this variety is called Mayflower and I'm using good quality seed sowing compost just pop some in there and then we'll just get the little plug plant and then gently surround it with fresh soil you can bury them a little bit deeper just down to the first set of leaves and then just firm that in if you need to put some more soil just to make it stand up a bit that's fine and then give it a really good watering and I will keep these indoors until the final frost that's the uh, kitchen department over there and on the right hand side here is where I've got some shelves and that's my bird seed and some plant food up there but it's all looking very spick and very span. Right, there's a lot to do today. Let's go off into the shed. No, I'm in the shed. Off to the greenhouse. April is all about potting on. So I've just potted on some tomato seedlings and I'm just putting them into a little bath of water to give them a really good soak and I'll leave them in there for around 20 minutes. I love this time of year. It's all about transplanting. And these are some Lavatera seeds that I sowed only a few weeks ago. It's not that far off, but we've had such fantastic weather recently that they've really put on a lot of growth. So now it's time to put them into their individual pots. Now, there's no easy way of doing it. Just get a pencil and just put it underneath and then just tease out the seedlings and then we'll get a smaller pot and put some potting compost in there and look at that beautiful anything better than that in life look at that the start of a new plant so we'll just pop that in like so put a bit of soil around it and then I'll put this into a tray of water for around 20 minutes, give it a really good soak and I'll keep these inside because it's still getting a bit cold on the allotment. In the greenhouse it's getting to 4 degrees of an evening which means outside that it's getting colder so I'll leave these indoors for a few weeks up until mid-May and then I'll put them out. Right, let me just get on and do the rest of these, look at them, beautiful. 
It's got a bit nippy. I could do with my coat, but I haven't got one down with me. So don't get too excited with all this hot weather because we could still have a frost. We've had snow in April, even after a really warm start to the month. Well, it's starting to get a bit cold now. Just wanted to show you this little thing that I rigged up. I've got my solar panel light. So in the day, the light faces down for doing work on my bench. And then in the night, when it's time for entertaining, you just turn it around and the warmth light of the wood bounces back into the room. Ideal for a bit of reading and a cup of tea. My peas are getting rather tall now, so it's time to erect some form of climbing frame. Bad. I'm poopy scooped. What's happened to the sunshine? What's occurring is I've just been sorting through all my seeds, having that panic. You know the panic that comes after a couple of days of really gorgeous weather and you think, ah, it's the height of summer and nothing is growing. What have I done wrong? Or you put your pea thing up. I'm going to sell my run of beans today and the variety is Firestorm. Now, I'm doing them in these root trainers just because I find that runner beans really like to throw their roots down, make a nice plug plant. So just fill it up with this compost. It's just seed sowing compost. And with these root trainers, you have to press it down to make sure that every little nook and cranny is full with soil. Because the seeds are so big, they're very easy to see and handle. And it's just one seed per station, just pop it in like that and then just cover with a bit of compost then get your water, give them really good watering and I'll keep these plants indoors until the final frost in May and that's when I'll put them outdoors against the canes that I will be erecting in a few days. Next I'm going to sow my cucumbers and this variety is called Mini Munch and you don't get many cucumbers in packets so I've just got a few. So I'm going to put them into this just terracotta pot. I'll put a few of them in. Since cucumbers are quite difficult to start to germinate in. So what's that? One, two, three, four. There's five in there. I'll pop one in the middle as well. And I'm putting them in on their sides. The general train of thought is if you put them flat they could rot. So if you put them uh, sideways, pop the seed back in there and that one. There you go, too many had fallen in then. And we'll just cover them with a bit of compost, give them a really good watering and these will then stay in the greenhouse until later on. Well the greenhouse has been really busy today sorting out the seedlings. There's still a lot to uh, pot on. This is my shark fin melon on the left and my cauliflowers are over here and they're looking wonderful I must say. And on the other side are my calabrese plants. Again nice and sturdy specimens and I'm just now judging when the best time is to put them out. This coming week we could be getting a frost so I'm going to resist for another week but they will be going out fairly soon. And on the indoor potatoes and their little flowers just starting to show their heads. It's a beautiful Easter weekend today and it's not that busy down here so it's very nice just to enjoy the sunshine and the quiet. Yeah. 
in the greenhouse last night. It went down as cold as 2.2, so I'm guessing outside was probably about one degree. I was hoping to put my brassicas out today. It's a nice day, but the weather forecast is saying that next week we could have really cold days down to freezing. So I'm erring on the side of caution and I'm keeping them in the greenhouse. And if it does get cold, I might even take them home to be extra on the safe side. Today's been rather wonderful though. Now, unfortunately, I've run out of candles and my heater, which is for the uh, greenhouse, doesn't work. So I'm using this, my kettle. And I'll just put it down to a low heat. And I did this last night and it kept the greenhouse at four degrees all night. It's only a cheap one pound can and I can afford to waste that. So I'll just take my chance that when that has run out, hopefully the greenhouse will be warm enough. Because it would be a shame to lose any of these seedlings. Everything's looking rather nice. And this weekend, I think the task will be transplanting. So just make sure the greenhouse is locked up for the night and because there's a flame in, in there not that anybody should be going in here just be on the safe side I lock it make sure there's no cats in there now no it's all free and there we are that flame will just burn until it gets to the end of the can I'll come back in the morning Well, it's the next day and I've already had reports from allotment here on the way down to mine that their dahlias and their vines have been affected by this frost. So let's have a look how the little cooker did overnight. So there we go. So the cold as it got last night was just above freezing, only just about. Just close the door, keep the, heat, the little heat that's in. In here, okay. Everything looks fine. So it seemed to work. Everything is looking perfect. Look at all these tomatoes. I don't know what I'm going to do with all these. It certainly helped. Look, my cucumbers. There's three I can see that are coming up. These are my Brussels sprouts, the one that I transplanted the other week. And look, we're now on to the first true leaves of the celeriac. And that's ready to transplant, so that's a job I can get on with this weekend. And I've just noticed that the, the run of beans that I put in, when was it, last week? They've started to just poke their heads up, and that variety is called Firestorm. If your strawberries have a black eye in them, if that middle bit has turned black, that means unfortunately they've been hit by frost and you won't get fruit this year. Just looking at mine, a few of them are slightly uh, touched, but I'm still waiting for a load more fruit, so I could be okay. Have a look at my herbs here. Herbs fascinate me. There's nothing there all winter. And then the first signs of spring, you get this beautiful structural plant that just pops up from out of nowhere. These are my mints. I would normally put mint into pots, but this is in the raised bed, so it's not going to spread that much. And I've got two types of mint. This is the normal mint that you'd put in your cooking, the one that you would find in your pot of mint. And this is a, another variety of mint. And if you remember, these are the foxgloves that I did, I did from seed about two years ago. Nice to see there are ladybirds living down there. And what's even better to see is that they are sending up a, a flower. And once they burst into life, I'm looking forward to this. It's been a long process, been about two years to get this far. 
and it'll be a fantastic display there in front of the mallow that I've got just behind it. Today I'm planting out my cauliflowers and beautiful plants out too and the variety is called Mayflower. When you put them in you can put them down a little bit deeper than they were in their pots right up to that first node but with all brassicas they like a really firm bottom so as soon as you think it's firm press it down again and then give it a really good watering. The celeriac has now got to a point where it's time to pot them on, so that's what I'm going to be doing next. They're fairly small, but they've got a really good root system to them. So just fill a pot up, this is just multi-purpose compost, nothing special. Press it down. I'm not going to fill them up too much with uh, with soil. There you go. Well, we've had brilliant sunshine for the past few days, but now, on the first day of May, it's decided to rain. So it's quite a relief to see it, to be honest. Although you have to be careful on days like this, because if you get drizzle for 24 hours and then brilliant hot sunshine, that's perfect conditions for blight which then affects the uh, potatoes and the tomatoes. This is a beautiful flower that my neighbour's growing. It's called woad. It's got a really heavy scent to it. And this is part of a garden that she's growing, where she's going to be using the flowers as dyes in some of her home crafts. There's a beautiful uh, scent from it, and it's quite tall, and, and it's grown to about uh, five foot, and nearly six foot in a matter of two or three months. So if you want something really quick in the garden with a heady scent, grow woad. In the greenhouse there's hardly anywhere to sit or walk at the moment. I've just noticed. Look at my uh, Firestorm runner beans there. Looking great. It's starting to rain now so we're all taking a bit of shelter into sheds and greenhouses. In this bed today, I've sown, so the whole bed is sown with sweet candle carrots and I'm looking forward to harvesting them and seeing how much of that depth will be taken advantage of by the carrots. Now I've got some of this EnviroMesh on the side, so I'm going to construct that and uh, just throw it over the top just to protect them from the cats and also the carrot fly when that comes in a few weeks time. Now I don't want to cut it because it's quite expensive uh, stuff so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to get a staple gun, just staple it to the wood around the sides, make sure it doesn't blow away and as the carrots grow I can then lift it up with the height of the, the with the height of the foliage. Well, it's a really sunny day today, and I'm going to be sowing my parsnips. And this variety is called Gladiator. Now you can make a drill, and make a drill like that and then throw the seed in but I'm going to do it a different way I'm just going to do, make a little station like that a couple of inches apart from each other and because parsnips are notoriously bad to germinate I'm going to put two per station and I will take out the weakest one if they both germinate
down here my potatoes and then right at the bottom are the peas and in front of the peas I'll put uh, salads I think what's going on over here then get out of it Well, look at the disaster that's uh, in front of me today. Foxes have been down, digging a hole, and it doesn't look that bad. But when you think, I'm gonna have to get on this bed. When you think, look, it's really pushed all the plants all over there. They'll all come back, but it's just getting annoying that it's every day that I come down now, and I'm having to fix holes for the foxes. Look, it was a perfect crop that was. So it's pushed them all away from this. Uh, gets you down a bit, doesn't it? Look at that. I'm gonna have to build some proper framing to, like, really solid to go around these beds, just to keep everything off. not even midday it's about 11 o'clock and it's 33 degrees in the greenhouse so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the door, door open but I'm putting this net in in the doorway just to stop the cats from going in and jumping up on the the worktop there we go that'll do it get some air in there blow bring the temperature down If you want something with a really heavy scent in the garden, then I love this, absolutely love it. Night scented stock. So I've got a terracotta pot and I'm going to put it into a pot because I can then move it around. Now because this is quite dry, I'm going to give it a really good soak in. It's been really dry here recently, the last few weeks. I'll just cover that over make a bit of a puddle from it there we go now the seed it's very thin so I'm going to sprinkle it straight from the packet I'll just show you the seed there it is so take a pinch I'm going to put this quite thickly take a pinch and it around everywhere. I've got quite a few of these packets because I'm planning to put it all all over the place. There you go. Every last inch of it and now I'm just going to cover with a bit of compost on top like so and because I've already watered it I don't have to water it again. Just make sure that the cats stay off it until it's established itself. So have a go at that night scented stock and it's a nice sort of bluey purpley flower and it's a really heavy scent you really need to try it. Right on to the next job. The ground is so solid that it's ending up breaking the bamboo canes that I'm trying to put in the ground. Look at that. It's breaking them into bits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to abandon that I'm going to abandon that for the time being. Uh, but I'm going to put some runner beans into one of the raised beds.
Now there's a frost due tonight, so what I will do is I'll just put another bag of compost in at the bottom to fill it up a bit, and then tomorrow or the day after I'll come down and plant out my runner beans. It's a bit windy today, so I'll get some string. Just tie them to the uh, to the poles. They said when they came that you can harvest them as little as 10 weeks, so I'm going to put that to the test. Well, they're certainly red. Now, I've never grown these before, they're the first early, so I'm not sure if that should be the size or whether they should be bigger, to be honest. So let's have a look what else we've got. This is one of the reasons why I grew them, was because of the 10 weeks. Well. Well, just for a laugh, we'll put them on the scales and see how many we've got. Let's have a look what we've got. Nothing much, because my scales isn't working, I don't think. No, scales have gone off, we'll have to take them home. So here we go, I've already weighed the bowl and set it back to zero. So the weight of the potatoes from the greenhouse is two pound and four ounces. Right, get them in the pot, have them for my tea. And as you can see, the skins have come off most of them, I think, and they've only been cooking for about oh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, so they don't need long. Nice and fluffy. Now I put these into this water bath to try and protect them from the slugs and snails and they don't seem to have got them. And look, I've got my, my first lupin spear because slugs and snails love lupins and sweet peas so they in fact can go out into the open ground once we get some fine weather which is possibly on the weekend my potatoes are really putting on some weight now these are the uh, the main crop potatoes the runner beans so just come down keep an eye on them make sure they aren't being eaten but this spot of rain will be very handy for my parsnips and my carrots they can now get on and start germinating because they've been in for over a week now look at my cabbages and my broccoli oh, we've just had a nice uh, spot of rain at last we haven't had it for over a week or two look at the beauty on these foxgloves they're called apricot delight and I grew them from seed started about two years ago and this is the first time they've flowered. And absolutely stunning. And as you can see there, the bees are loving them. Fox love, apricot delight. These are my celeriac and they're doing wonderfully. And now it's time to put them out into the open ground. There we go. On with to the next one. Next things to plant are the squash, shark fin melon, and the outdoor cucumbers.
right, I think the first thing to go in will be the cucumbers. I think what I'll do is I'll put the cucumber on each bed, on the opposite side of each bed. Try and make some form of a design from it all. Right. Beautiful roots, look at that. Beautiful roots, just waiting to be uh, planted. This variety is called Market Mall. I'll put it there. Now, when I plant them, I like to make sure that that is above the level that it was in the pot. So I'm not going to press it down too hard. They don't like to be drenched in water. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting a little reservoir around the side, so rather than watering the base of the stem, I can water in this little mort around it. Right, let's put the other one on the other side. Now in the other corner, I'm going to plant my courgette. I don't really like courgettes that much, so one plant will see me through the entire season. This variety is called Venus. Again, give it a really good watering. Like that. And it doesn't harm to give this a mort as well. Because these type of plants are really greedy for water. And I think it's going to be a very dry summer this year. So there we go. Look after the plants and they will then look after you. Right, I think I might put my squash into this bed as well. This squash is called Hurricane. Look at the roots on that, it's just gagging to get going. So, hole in the soil, pop it in. These are well watered, these are. Give them a little firm in, like so. So on the end of one of my beds here, this is where I put my potatoes very early in the season and they got caught by the frost. So I'll put my shark fin in this section. Again, look at it, it's just gagging to get going. And I've never done this, uh, this melon before, but they tell me that it's quite vigorous. So much so that if you you can find it down the bottom end of your plot within a season. So if I put it here, it can fall over the side of the bed and there's quite a bit of space here that I'm not going to tackle this year. Uh, but next year I'll put my, my runner beans there. But so for the time being, this can just trail over and just go wherever it wants to. With the exception of the fuchsias, the top table's looking pretty bare. It's worth taking the time to take all the pots out and just check around because you never know what you might find. Look what I've just found, two of them. One, two. Lift up your pots, look underneath them. Like I said, take them out. Look, there's a slug in there. So just take everything out and it's worth giving everything a really good inspection. Strange to think that it's only a matter of, what is it, a few weeks away, two, three weeks away, and the longest day of the year will come, and then the nights will start to draw in, ready for winter. Somebody was asking me that their onions weren't bulbing up. A little uh, ditty about onions is, they don't bulb up until after the longest day of the year has passed. So you keep an eye, they'll just sit there, and once that longest day comes and goes, then they'll suddenly go Brrr. But to stop these centers from turning yellow, we have to shield it. So there's two ways of doing this, but ultimately you have to stop the light from getting to the, uh, the curd. So you can gather all the leaves up like that, either then get some twine and go around and tie it or get an elastic band and just put it around like that and keeping the light off the center and then just leave it there until you are ready to harvest it 
in a few weeks time and this variety is called Mayflower. Right, I'm going to get on and do the rest. The broccoli has already started to come up. This is my summer broccoli. I do love broccoli. So yes, everything in this part of the garden, in this bed anyway, is looking really rosy. So there are the cauliflowers all wrapped up. And that is certainly a lovely sight. Time to harvest the broad beans. I've got some black fly on them. Uh, I did pinch the tops out, but we seem to have a, another infestation come about a week ago. Look at the size on them. Beautiful size. And a beautiful taste with them as well. But I must remember to take some home and not sit and just eat them all on the allotment. Beautiful. Beautiful harvest for the first crop. I'll unshell these and have them for my tea tonight. I could do with a few potatoes for my tea. So I'm, I'm going to see what's underneath these first earlies that I put in, in one of the raised beds. So this is what I've got for my dinner today. Some potatoes, broad beans, and some freshly picked spring onions. It's a beautiful meal. My night scented stock that I sold last month is doing wonderfully. I've put this into a pot because it can get a bit straggly. And obviously because it's got a beautiful scent, if it's in a pot, I can move it around the, the garden wherever I'm sat. So one thing I want to transplant today are the cucumbers. These are the indoor cucumbers called mini munch. They're, th they're sort of quarter size cucumbers. And I've left them go dry on purpose to uh, make this part of the task a bit easier. So let me just get my dipper. So just get underneath them, take as much root as possible. And again, like everything else, we try not to touch the actual stem. One thing about cucumbers, they don't like to be sat in water and they definitely don't like their stems to be surrounded by water. So this is something that we definitely water from the base. One thing that I'm pleased with this year is this. I did some diacea seeds and only one survived. And this is it. So I'm looking after it. Been rather precious about it. It's got a beautiful flower and they're just about to uh, start to come from it. And before I put this outside, I might try and take some cuttings of it. Nothing like a cup of tea to cool you down. Beautiful. Tea always tastes a bit better in the garden. You want to sleep? It's just a little bit warm. So here we are. Temperature today is 50 degrees, which is 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's in the greenhouse, but outside it's not much different. At this precise second, the temperature is 105, which is nearly 41. That's warm.
have a look at that. Look at that, it's beautiful that is. Take that home, I, th I think I might have that for my dinner. Now, what, with what's left in the ground, I'm just going to cut around it like that. And then just throw that on the compost bin. Just look at the beautiful colours on this. Stunning. I thought it was about time that I harvested some of my first early potatoes. I could have really harvested them a long time ago, but I didn't need them. And the best place to store potatoes is in the ground. So I, I need some now for my dinner. So let's have a look at what we've got. Not a bad harvest. So next to my shark fin melon over there, I've got a nice clean bed for a new crop. Beautiful. Also this week I harvested my shallots. Now I usually use shallots a bit more like spring greens, but this year I've had so many of them I've just let them continue to grow in the ground. So I'm lifting them, taking them home to the kitchen, and then I'm going to maybe pickle some and use some in some salads this week. There's nothing better than fresh shallots and onions straight from the garden. Blackberries are ready for picking and they're looking really gorgeous but blackberries to me are sort of more of a September plant so it doesn't half play with the brain when you see them which are which for me anyway is a bit out of season but they're really big and they're really juicy this year 
I got a feeling courgettes might be on the, uh, the menu. I can't find my secateurs, so I'm just going to have to use the scissors. There's one. Look at this one. This should have been done a few days ago. We've had a lot of rain this week. And there's another one around here. Now I don't need all of these, so I'll give some of these away if I see any more plot holders this evening. The outdoor cucumbers are ready for picking as well. Now the difference with the outdoor ones compared to the indoor ones is that their skin is a bit tough. So I do use a potato peeler and cut the outside skin off before I put them in the salads. But that'll be re really good, that will. Beautiful. Look at these pom-pom dahlias. Beautiful, aren't they? Just bobbing their heads there against the backdrop of the shark fin melon which is all over the place, look at it it's taking over well the runner beans are starting to come into harvest and about time too, because I've been really looking forward to them this year. So far, no trouble with black fly. Oh, just said that. And I've just opened a little bit there, and it's covered in black fly. So what I could do is I could get some uh, washing up liquid and put that into one of those spray bottles and to spray it. Just as I thought I'd got away with it then beautiful I have to be careful in this section because my shark fin melon has decided to climb up the frames so I have to make sure that I don't touch it or cut it off by mistake So nice though, just eat them now. Well, it's the next day, and this morning the judges came around the site to have a look at the best plot and best newcomer and best site for the awards, which will take place in October. Now, that was this morning, we had beautiful weather, but now the rain is throwing it down. But that's okay because my task today is to continue cleaning the greenhouse. Nope, the shed. So this is what I did yesterday. Give it a thorough clean. Also, where is he? Rusty's sheltering. Well, he was anyway. So today's task is now to clean this side up. Because we do keep too much stuff, don't we? So I'm going to go through it and see what I want to keep and what I can distribute to other plot holders. Just come in the greenhouse for a second. I want to show you my cucumbers. I've always got cucumbers to this stage and then they've shriveled up and dropped off. But this year, this greenhouse is doing me proud. Look at that. Sorry, big. Let me just put my finger by it. So I've got one plant there, and then another one in the corner. They do need to be fed with some Epsom salts. This is a magnesium deficiency. That's rusty. And then I've got another one over in this corner here, next door to the tomatoes. And again, look at it. If every one of these comes to a full plant, then I'll be proud. And it's raining again today, so hopefully that my, my uh, potatoes won't be suffering with uh, blight. Because I'm looking forward to giving them a, a harvest, because that bed up there is really getting full with potatoes. And that's one of the reasons why I want to cut back the shark fin melon, to be honest, is to actually see what the other crops are going on about. Because I completely forgot 
that I had celeriac. I nearly forgot the name of it then. I completely forgot that I had celeriac in one of the top beds because I can't see it because of this shark fin melon. Well, this weather isn't getting any better, so I'm going to head home. The first cucumber in the greenhouse is going to be harvested. I've got quite a few. They're all over the place, but the one that I'm going to harvest is over here. And it's a nice size. This variety is called Mini Munch, I think. And how I like to harvest mine is just to give them a twist, like so. There we go. Look at that. They're supposed to be this small, uh, sm the size of a lunchbox. So I'm going to take this home, maybe have some cucumber sandwiches this afternoon. But now, onto the onions. I've got some really big globes this year. When lifting onions, do not pull. Always put a little hand fork underneath them, and then just gently raise them up. Shake off that soil. Look at that. That's a beautiful globe. And it's not just the, the white ones that, that are big as well. Check out the red ones. I actually prefer the red ones. So again, put a fork underneath. Wait for the pop. And there we have it. So put that over with the white one. And look at those. Two very nice globes. Look at that. A nice handful. Beautiful. smell on these is absolutely gorgeous. Now this isn't the whole harvest, I've just brought half in and I'll go back out and get the other half in a moment. One thing you want to do in the greenhouse now is to dry them out and make sure that all the water goes back out of the bulb. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them on this shelf here and just hang them down. Now, it's not all about the size, so it's good if you've got some that are like normal average size, but sometimes you might not want a big onion. And I will leave them in the greenhouse like this, just for a few days because it's too hot in here to keep them long term. So I'll just do this, give the ants time to disappear if there are any on the leaves and because you don't want them too hot because they'll dry out and don't forget this is your winter feed this will this will will get you through the uh, the lean months coming up so you want to take good care of your harvest at this point let me just move that bit of wood in there you go The smell in the greenhouse is absolutely divine. So they'll stay in here for a few days. I will then take as much soil off as possible, clean them up, check them to see if there's got any mold on, and if they have, then I will use them in the kitchen sooner than later.
It's been a good year for onions. These were done from set earlier in the year. Tell me how your onion crop has been doing in the comments below. It's always good to hear what varieties people are doing. I do prefer a red onion to a white one. The taste is a lot milder and I appreciate that. But it's always good to show off a big one to the neighbours, isn't it? That's a prize winner if ever I saw one. So there we are, the onion harvest for 2017 has been gathered in and now it's all just slowly drying around the greenhouse and the smell is absolutely intoxicating. If you don't have the facility to do something like this to allow them to hang down it's perfectly fine just to put them onto the worktop but one thing you must do is try and put them so that they're facing so that the necks are facing down so that all the moisture can just run out but they're looking proper gorgeous I've just taken the cover off my parsnips have a quick look at them and they're doing a lot better than I thought what I'm going to do today is just potter around and do a bit of weeding there they are. Look at that. Obviously I'm not going to harvest it now, just having a quick look. They'll be harvested around about Christmas, all the way up to February. But for now, let's just cover them over again. Beautiful. This is one of my sweet candle carrots. Uh, it's not due to be harvested for about an another month, but I need a carrot for my tea, so it needs must. So here we go, let's get that snail off. Let's have a look, so this is sweet candle. Oh, it's white. Oh, okay, that's interesting. It's a white carrot. Yeah, it's a carrot, but it's a white one. Okay, that got into the wrong packet then. Let me pull another one. I've got this rogue potato that's appeared from somewhere. That's better. Like I said, this is early. It should be a lot bigger than that. But I want a carrot for my tea. So, there you go. Let's take this one as well. Decent size, aren't they? Sweet candle. A neighbour's just asked if he could have one of these carrots, so here it goes. Let's dig this one up for him. There we go, lovely. Let's have a look at this one in the corner here. This looks a big one. at that. Ah, it's a bit forked. Anyway, it's still good for the pot. So there we go, just a few carrots for my tea, beautiful. So here they are, all nice and washed, some really good specimens there, and I'm going to pop them on the scales, 
see how much they weigh. So there we have it. The weight of the carrot harvest 2017 is nine pound and let's call that 15 is it? Nine pound 15. Beautiful. Well, the cucumbers have now come to an end and they're given really good service. So I'm going to just get them out of the greenhouse and throw the foliage on the compost bin. This weekend, a strange parcel arrived. A funny shape thing it was. And when I got it out of the box, I discovered it was a sign for my plot and it's got pictures on there such as Rusty, the shark fin melon and some flowers and it was sent to me by Jordan, Dominic and Drew from Manchester so thanks to them and thanks to their parents Rachel and Jeff. Now I filmed on their plot a few years ago when they won the award for best allotment in Britain so I'll put a link down to that video in the description below. The last cucumber is ready to be harvested. Again, these have been given really good service this year. So that can come out. If you do these ones that are outdoors, they're very nice. It's just the, the skins are a bit tough. So you do need to go over them with a uh, with a potato peeler and just take the outsides off. But great, I'll have that for my tea. I'm in the greenhouse today as you can see and I'm doing a bit of a clean up. It does feel like autumn so I thought that I'd get one step ahead this year and get the greenhouse uh, cleaned. I don't think there's anything going to go in here over winter. I haven't got any plans so far anyway but we'll see things change and all that. Um, I might do some violas and if you want to have calendulas early next year then now's the time to sow them in August and September. So I may do one or two things like that but I'm not doing a load of things where I need to heat the greenhouse in the winter. In all the little nooks and crannies, I forget just to run a brush over, get all those cobwebs out. It's going to be a warm day today, so I'm doing this quite early so that the heat can dry everything out. Right then, I'm going to do a bit of weeding, but let's have a bit of music to get me on my way. Oh yes! Right, let's crack on as Dave would say. Here we go. I think it's time to harvest the first of the uh, shark fins. Oh. Just if you do grow this, just be aware that the stems 
they, they, they do have something like very uh, thin prickles on, so just be careful. There we go. Question is now, what do I do with it? <laughs> That's a heavy beast, that is. Who needs to go to the gym when you grow shark fin melons? I don't know how much longer I'll have as the clouds are now starting to draw in. Right, well the rain is starting, so I'm just gonna whip this shark off and add it to the collection. Look at that. What a beauty. Run for the sheds. Run for the sheds. No, oh, run for the plastic instead. Well, that's a, a note. When you do your plot and you see bits of plastic up like this, just make sure there's nothing hiding and underneath it before you start uh, throwing like bits of wood all over the place to keep it down. Always check under your plastic first. Well, I think rain has stopped play. Just had a massive thunderstorm then. Just as I was getting it into it as well. You find that sometimes, don't you? As soon as you find a bit of energy and you want to really make progress, the rains come. So here we are. This is the harvest of the shark fin melon. Uh, the ones that are slightly white on the sides, they were the ones that were really down low in the in the foliage. So if you do get this, just uh, cut a bit of the foliage off surrounding it to let the sun get into it. It is wedged in the fence. That's not going anywhere for a while. So, with the shark fin gone, it now certainly makes the plot look a bit different. I can actually see where the raised beds are now. It's a beautiful day, beautiful Sunday. Something about Sunday that's very relaxing on the allotments. My task today is to carry on and do the dividing line with the path. So for years, the dividing line's been here but there's a tree in the way and the committee are getting quite obsessed with paths but they allowed somebody to plant all these trees about 20 years ago and now it's created a problem so I've given in and for harmony's sake I've said I'll give up a foot of my plot in order to create a new path problem is with this site is depends wherever you stand it's straight in several different directions. Time to lift the potatoes. These are the main crop potatoes and the variety is Rudolph. And they've been put in this raised bed. It's a red potato. I've got no idea what they are like. Well I think I've got them all out. There's probably one or two still in there. But this is the harvest of Rudolph. I'm quite impressed by the sheer size of some of them. Look at that, a duck. But yes, beautiful sizes. Looking forward to trying one of these tonight for my tea. These are very good as roast potatoes and as jacket potatoes. Obviously, you can tell by the size. But they do say that you can also use them for any other type of cooking. There we go, nice three sacks of potatoes for the winter feed. The last few days have been so hot, it's just been unbearable to be on the plot. But I've come down very early, it's about nine o'clock in the morning, and the plan is to do a bit of strimming. <laughs> is 
run out. So that's the end of that job for the day. If you want to save your runner beans for next year, then just leave a few pods on the plant and just let them go dry and then pick them off, take them indoors, put them onto a tray to dry out completely and then put the seeds into storage until next year. But don't do it if it's an F1 because the new plant then won't come true. Put the lights on. There we go, it's raining outside. But I've just been home because it's the start of September and for me that's a good time to have a bit of a spring clean. So I've cleaned the shed this morning, sprinkled it up and I've got these. These are my uh, curtains, you remember? I don't know if I've got any gas left yet. Let's have a look. Oh, I thought that was a full, no, so I'm going to have to find some more gas, so I'm going to do that, I'll be back in a minute. Right, I think we're cooking on gas now. How many of you have a cooker in your shed? You don't have to have an allotment, you can have a cooker in your garden. Right, I've got the shed door open ajar because you don't want it closed if you've got these on. Surrounding the pond, I want something with a bit of height just to add a bit of structure. And I do like a grass, and I'm going to grow three of these. These are called Calamagrosis acutiflora, and the variety is called Carl Forster. And it's a really large plant and it will add great structure to the back of the plot there. I know it seems strange to be planting grass when uh, the majority of the time we're trying to take grass out of the allotment. But if you've got something a bit decorative, then I just quite like going past it and putting my hand and just feeling the, uh, the grass and the and the feathers, because this is also known as feather reed grass. And in the autumn, it produces to about uh, five foot tall, a beautiful spike with a f like a, uh, a feather on the end of it. And uh, you can't stop yourself, but go past and give it a quick feel. Another grass I'm growing is Penicillium allopictoroides helium. And this will be going in the small bed from the pond to the greenhouse and the reason why I'm growing so many grasses is just I'm thinking they can become homes for the for the frogs just to go inside and hide underneath the grass and not to be disturbed. This is also known as dwarf fountain grass so by the side of the pond is the perfect uh, place. What's also good about this grass is it will tolerate drought and for the last few years my garden has had nothing but warm sunshine from March until the rains come in August and it's very easy to look after and it's very easy to, to divide in the spring as well but I'll show you that next year. Well the sun might have come out and it's quite warm here in the greenhouse but outside there's definitely a chill in the air and we're definitely moving very quickly towards autumn in a few weeks. Remember a few weeks ago when I lifted the shark fin melon and I just threw the debris onto this bed? Well look it's caught again, it's regrown itself and I have seen in there, look, the fruit has returned. They're all over the place, being taken over by the sharks. One of the drawbacks with filming at this time of year is that the leaves make a terrible noise on the camera. So what I'm doing here, this was early on Sunday morning, 
is I decided to lift one of my parsnips. I'm a bit impatient and I wanted to have a look. So I decided to harvest the biggest one. And by doing that, it then gives a bit more space for the other parsnips to develop. Now parsnips like a bit of frost. So what you could do is you could just put this parsnip into the freezer for two or three minutes, make it pretend that it's uh, in the depth of winter, and then the parsnip will become a bit sweeter. But for the first parsnip from the raised bed, I'm really impressed by this one. So I'm looking forward to getting the rest of the parsnips out later in the year. So I've just harvested my squash. It's not been a good year for squash for me this year. Got some really interesting shapes, but there's not a lot of weight to them. I mean, that's the biggest one that I've got. Look at that, you could just cosh somebody over the head with that one. I'm putting that down to the fact that I put them in quite late and that in the bed where I had them, I also did my cucumbers and my courgettes. So that's why I'm putting my poor harvest down, but some, really some interesting shapes to them though. But there's a feed there. What a difference a day makes. This was this morning and an hour later it was completely different. I've been busy recently, spending time doing the path between me and my neighbour. The committee wanted them to be a bit more aligned, so that's what I've done. And it doesn't look much, but it's a job that's taken quite a few days to do. So the grass is starting to come back now. So I've got up to the end of my flower bed, and when I get some more floorboards, I'm going to go up to the... Uh, the, the end of my plot because after 10 years we've discovered that my plot was two foot too big. In the greenhouse I had a parcel this morning. Very large box turned up with some slates and on the other side of the greenhouse you'll see I've got some of these. So what they are is you put a slate on there and it's a a plant uh, label. Now there's not a lot to show you in my flower garden but there's a plot on the other side of this site and they've got some really stunning dahlias so let's have a quick look at them. Oh. Oh, it's really thick. Right, I think that's it. I'll try and move it and put it onto the compost bin, but I think I've got all the, the roots out. Oh, I think I need a cup of tea after that. Maybe even a biscuit as well. Whew. So the storm has arrived and it's one o'clock in the afternoon. And the sun has got this beautiful red colour to it. Look at it. Beautiful. Well, the wind is certainly starting to pick up now. And the sky 
is turning dark. Well, the sky's turned so dark that the street lights have now come on. I don't think it'll come out on the video, but there is a pink, reddish tinge to the world. Yesterday, one of the local gardeners here had some trees cut down in their garden. So I managed to persuade the workers to drop some of the wood chips onto our communal plot. So I'm going to have some this morning and put it into my hot composter just to get the temperature up a bit. soon get the heat up. If you've got a hot composter and it ever gets cold, just put a little bucket of uh, chippids on top. I guarantee that temperature will be really high in the next few days. Another development over the last few weeks has been outside the shed here. I've put some slab stones down, and a new entrance, and some pea shingle. I've put the pea shingle all down this side as well. And under the pea shingle is some crocuses. There we go. What a difference. That's strange. It's made the place look smaller. So all this needs to be moved and the table slotted in place. I have to find a location for this. Although this table does have little uh, side drawers so some things can go in there. There's a cupboard on each side. There you go. So some things can go in the cupboards, but I'm going to try and work it so I can sit there and use this. Look at this little secret thing I found. It's a place to put your cups of tea. At this time of year, the committee turns the water supply off and takes all the ball cocks off. And as you can see, it's starting to dissolve now, but there has been ice on here this week and it's been quite thick. If you have ice on your pond, just leave it there. The worst thing you can do if you've got ice on your pond is to is to throw something and smash it. Just leave it there. But look how beautiful. Oh, I was going to say, look how beautiful the design there is. Try again. Look at that. Stunning. On the side of the pond here, just spotted that my daffodils are already coming up. Have you got any spring bulbs already up in your garden? Tell me in the comments below. What's he up to down there? Look at that. What are you doing? I wonder if he can smell that other cat that was here just now. What are you up to? Oh, baby, looks good on the camera, doesn't it? Beautiful. Nice bit of dappled sunlight on it. 
Look at it. Well, it's not a lot, but the last day of November has been greeted with a tiny bit of snow to put us all in the Christmas mood. Ho, ho, ho. Well, it's Sunday morning on the allotment and there's not a soul around. We're into December now and I tend to find from experience that December months are the quietest months on the allotment. Everybody's getting ready for Christmas and Christmas Day down here is quite a busy day because people are down and it's quite funny some years you see people with kettles of hot water and uh, pick axes trying to get their uh, parsnips out of the ground and I'll be down this Christmas Day as well. You remember last time I was telling you about a new table that I've got. Well, I've put it in its position next door to this seat. This is a seat that uh, Jeff gave me just before he left and it's in front of the the window and I've brought the light down so I can sit there and put my light on and be a bit John Boy-esque from the Waltons. Sit there and write my memoirs or articles for the website while I, I look out onto the plot. But there's not a lot to look out at at the moment. Just a cold winter's day. I bought two of these solar panel setups, but the second one I bought, the box didn't work. But I kept it because it was so cheap, about £10 I think. So I've used the lights in other ways. And I set this up. You won't be able to see it now because it's daylight. But I've put a light in the greenhouse. So I can sit there in the night in in spring and continue to do my seed sowing. A couple of months ago I bought a tray on eBay and it turned up and I got my dimensions wrong. I thought it was a tea tray but it's a tray just to put your cup on but I've kept it. I might give it as a gift to somebody or just keep it in the greenhouse. So that is the new light, so I can potter away to my heart's content in spring. When all these pots will be full with bits of soil and seeds for another new year. This milk has been in my shed for about a week and it's been so cold down here that it's kept itself fresh. Nice bit of English breakfast tea and I'm stocked up with gas for the rest of the year. Well, it's coming up to three o'clock and I find that even though it doesn't get dark until about half four or five, at three o'clock the temperature just suddenly drops. So I won't be staying down here much longer. I'll just finish this cup of tea and then head home. I'm currently working on the Christmas video. If you've been around for a while, you'll understand. Okay, somebody else is here. There you go. Do you want to say hello? He likes this new table. So, let me carry on. Stop showing your ass to the screen. Come on, show your face. Hold on, hold on. What are you doing? Come on. Right, do you want some food? Again. 
Come on. He's already had some meat once. So that's the second lot of uh, chews he's been given. So, wh where was I before I was rudely interrupted? The Christmas video. Now, those that have been around for a while will know that at Christmas time I put together a video which is a sort of look back on the previous year. So I'm currently in the process of doing that at the moment. I'm trying new ways. I'm, I might just do it the way that I usually do it, or I might put them into small stories. So a bit like you see the journey of the shark fin melon, which was a highlight this year, which will never be grown again on this allotment. So I'm, so I'm working out styles at the moment. I'm talking about styles. This YouTube channel I've been doing for five years now, but I've actually been on YouTube for about 10, because I had a channel before this one. Um, but it got closed down because there was a problem back in the day with some music that I put on there that I didn't have the rights to. It was a, a sort of channel where I learned how to do YouTube and things like that. So that's gone. So I've been doing YouTube now for about 10 years. And it's got to the point where it's becoming a bit samey. And I want to go back to my roots of doing filmmaking. So I'm thinking in 2018 I might mix up the style of how I present the videos to you. So things will change but it will be the same. I'll still be here, Rusty will be here, Gary and Vivi will still pop in. It will still be about gardening but the way that you get to see it will be presented a bit more filmic. Let's, 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 let's call it that. Um, Something about tea in a shed that tastes a lot better. A lot of people have been asking me what tea do I like. I tend to go for salon and English breakfast. This is an English breakfast. I find a salon is a afternoon when you've been on the plot for quite a few hours and you just want to relax a bit. So things will change and they have to change otherwise it becomes boring for me to do the videos after 10 years of doing them the same way. So it's going to be mixed up a bit. The name is also changing. It's going to be called Diary of a UK Gardener and that is because of other plans that I have in 2018. But if you are going to miss the music and miss the opening titles then there are five years worth of videos you can go back and have a look because you have to allow people to grow like the garden itself. If it's the same every year it becomes a bit boring. So 2018 is a year of expanding the horizons and doing a few more. Uh, doing things in a different way. I think that's how I'll put it. So I'm working on that at the moment. One thing that will stay, stay the same and will never change is a good old cup of tea. Right, well the temperature's really dropping now and I'm going to uh, finish this. Rusty's gone as well. I'm going to finish this and head home. So I'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now. Oh. I was just looking at the picture.